I would like to take a look at stair settings and various ways you can customize stairs so that you can model the stair design you want for your project. I'm going to start with a simple monolithic stair as it is the simplest stair to modify. Then I'll do additional videos on more complex stairs. You always want to change your stair settings by opening the stair tool. Select the stair type you want to modify. I will use the delivered concrete stair monolithic. Also, set the placement options on the ribbon for the type of stair you are planning to place so that the preview will correctly show changes you make to the settings. To keep it simple initially, I'm going to do a single run stair with a single landing. From the light bulb pull down, select load stair settings. So to start, notice that there is a setting here, monolithic, which is set to true. That is what makes this a monolithic stair. It also means that a number of other settings will be grayed out, meaning they will have no effect on this stair and therefore cannot be changed. Now, I do have a couple of options for the underside of the monolithic stair, but before we look at that, let's change our preview. The preview can be rotated. I like to set it to left so that I can see the stair in section. Now, let's change the underside profile to stepped and we can see that we now have a stepped underside. The other option is mast, which would normally be used on a smaller stair with only a few steps. So I'm going to switch it back to sloped. Note here that there is a monolithic part definition, which will set the part for the entire stair. Now there's one other setting here, which is end with riser at landing. Let's zoom into the landing so we can see what this does. You can see that when it is set to false, we have a tread and then the landing starts. This does mean that if we are counting treads on the stair numbering, that this tread will be counted. If I change it to true, then we lose the tread, meaning it will not be counted. Now, if you're counting risers, then the setting will have no effect on the count. If you need the extra depth on the landing, there is another setting that will extend the landing. For now, I will set it back to false. Let's move to the treads tab. I can define the tread depth here. That is usually determined by the building code. Currently, the tread is just a plane, meaning other settings like thickness are grayed out and have no effect. I can define a nosing distance and a profile like a rounded fillet or a chamfer, but I'm going to actually set it to none as that is a lot of detail and it would add an extra line that I don't necessarily need to see on my plan drawings. Note that the part is grayed out here because for now everything is a single monolithic part. Let's move to the risers tab. I can set the target height. This is only a target. It will be adjusted depending on the overall height of the stair. And again, since the riser type is none, all other settings are grayed out, except the base riser offset which I will come back to in a minute. On the Stringers tab, everything is grayed out except the carriage offset. This defines the minimum distance on the underside of the stair. I will increase this to 150 millimeters as I'm going to create a rather large monumental type stair. On the Landing tab, I can define the landing thickness. This is also where I can extend the landing on both the approach and the departure by one tread depth. Keep in mind that the landing length and the extensions can also be modified easily in the model once the stair is placed. Now, let's go back to the treads tab and see if we can try something. In my model, I have a slab with a granite finish on top. I would like to do the same on the steps. So I can change the tread type to slab. Now I can give the tread a thickness. I'll make it 35 millimeters to match my granite floor finish. Now I can also change the part for the tread, so I will change it to the same part I am using for the floor finish. I can do a similar change on the risers. I'll change the type to straight panel. And I can define a thickness. 
I can define whether I want the riser to sit on top of the tread or behind the tread. I could also change the part. For instance, I could also make the riser a granite panel. Or I can leave it as the same part as the monolithic stair, and then it will unify back with the rest of the stair, leaving me with a concrete stair with a granite stone tread. Now let's look at that last setting for the base riser offset. As I've noted, I have a granite finish on a concrete slab. So I really need the concrete stair to sit on the concrete slab. But I want the riser calculated from the granite floor finish. This offset will add that additional height to the first riser. So I will set it to 35 millimeters, the thickness of my granite. Everything else is set now. Let's just take a quick look at the annotation tab. I will cover this in more detail in another video, but here are a few basic things to know. First of all, you can select a dimension style to control the textile. Also note that you can select whether you want to show counts for treads or risers. I will switch it to risers. I'm still thinking about that extra tread at the landing. I will display the down graphics, but not the arrows and labels. I will select a sloped break line and select the symbol to use. Now I'm going to go back to the general tab and set that end with riser to true. Either way, I only count the risers, but I don't want any chance of ending up with an extra tread line on my plans. I'm now going to change my stair height to 4,800 millimeters and the width to 3,000 millimeters. Note that changing the width also changes the length of the landing as well, since many codes tie the landing length to the width of the stair. Of course, this can be modified in the model after it is placed. I'll close the settings, but before I place the stair, I would like to save those settings. If I don't save them, the next time I load the stair, it will revert back to the default settings I started with. From the pull-down, I can simply save the catalog item with the current stair settings, or I can save it as a new catalog item. So let's do that. I will call the new stair, Concrete Stair Granite Tread. A new thumbnail is created for the stair, and it is saved to my current work set. Now I will place the stair, So let's take a quick look at that base condition. The concrete stair is extending down to the concrete slab. If I punch an opening in the granite finish at the base of the stair, I will be able to see this in the section drawing. I'll set view 3 to a section drawing I set up previously, and view 2 to a plan drawing. Let's zoom into that base detail. I can measure the riser from the finished floor, and it is exactly 150 millimeters, just as it should be. This was a fairly simple stair, but by adjusting the settings, I got exactly what I wanted. In future videos, I will look at a few other stair styles, and of course, adding handrails to stairs. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.